Okay, so in this lesson, I'm going to talk about na how to name carboxylic acids. So um, before we can talk about naming them, we need to figure out how to identify them and figure out what they are. So a carboxylic acid, um, as we've seen all quarter, every type of compound has a particular associated functional group, and the carboxylic acid functional group is the carboxyl group. So here's what a carboxyl group is. It is a, it's effectively a carbonyl, or with a hydroxyl group bonded to the carbonyl carbon. So we should recognize this as the carbonyl and this as a hydroxyl group attached to the carbon. Now this could be an R group or it could be a hydrogen, but if it's a hydrogen, that's only there's only one compound like that. It's called formic acid. Um, that's the common name anyway. Um, so this is the fun this is the functional group for carboxylic acid. Now it's easy to get confused with like an aldehyde or possibly a ketone, but it's the combination of the OH and the carbonyl. So it's important to know that even though it has, even though the carbonyl has the look of a carbonyl plus a hydroxyl group, it's, it's not, its characteristics are not just a combination of the two. It's its own functional group because it has its own set of functionalities and reactions, et cetera, et cetera. How to name them? Um, the naming of a carboxylic acid is most closely associated with naming aldehydes, actually. Naming aldehydes is the closest thing. So, so when we name a carboxylic acid, and the reason it's the closest to naming aldehydes is by definition, the carboxyl group has to be on the end. And since we start numbering closest to the carboxyl group, in a carboxylic acid, the carboxyl group carbon is always considered carbon number one. Whatever else follows, this is always going to be carbon number one. So we're not going to need a number to indicate where the carboxyl, uh, where the carboxyl group is, like we do on alcohols and uh, alkenes and ketones and such. It just is assumed to be carbon number one. So let me get that clear that that's a one. And so we are always going to pick the longest carbon chain, but it, like with aldehydes, it has to include the carboxyl group carbon. What we're going to do is we'll, so here's an example. So this one has one, two, three, four. So we use the same, you know, base names that we always have. So this would be butane if it was an alkane, but we're going to change to butanoic acid. So the oic acid is always going to be the name ending for um, carboxylic acids. Now we don't need a number out here. There's no need for a number because we it's we know that the the um, carboxyl group is always on carbon number one. So the only thing that's going to precede the parent chain name is going to be if there are any substituents out on the rest of the carbon. So as I said, we always number by assigning one to the carboxyl carbon atom. And we determine the location of any substituents as per usual. So here's some examples. So we're going to start by identifying the longest parent chain. And it could be either, so this is going to be one, two, three. It could go either four, five, or it could go four, five. Either one is fine uh, because they're both the same. Now, the parent chain name is going to, of course, be pentanoic acid. Now all we have to do is identify the substituents. So we have three substituents. We have an ethyl group there, a chloro group, and a methyl group. So in alphabetical order, this is going to be 
three chloro, because C comes before E for ethyl, and I didn't leave myself enough space. Three chloro, three ethyl, two methyl, and I have to kind of cram it all in there, two methyl pentanoic acids. So writing it out properly, three chloro, three ethyl, two methyl pentanoic acid. So that one takes up quite a lot of room. Uh, just because of the three different functional group or three different substituents, but and there it is, and that's how you name, and that's how you name carboxylic acids. So what I want you to do is I want you to try naming each of these. Uh, take a moment and pause it and try to name them. Okay, so let's do this first one. So this one's really straightforward. This is just butanoic acid. It so happens it's the first example I did already. So it's just carbon one, two, three, four. Very simple. Here, the second one over on the right is we have the, this is carbon one, of course, this is carbon two, and then the chain stops. This chlorine is not a carbon. It doesn't get counted. It's a substituent. So our parent name is ethanoic acid, and then the substituent is to chloroethanoic acid. So we don't have to put any numbers between the chloro and the ethanoic acid. Down here, I made a mistake. This should have a double bond on it, of course. Um, so this is one, carbon one, two, three, four, and five. So this is going to be two, three, dimethyl for the two methyls here, one at carbon two and one at carbon three, dimethyl pentanoic acid. Finally, the last one is going to be uh, we're going to one, two, three, and four, five. So this is going to be another pentanoic acid. This is just going to be three methyl pentanoic acid. Now, I should point out that this way of um, drawing the functional group is a valid way. So the shorthand is COOH, just like. OH is a shorthand for a hydroxyl group. So um, the last thing I'll do is I'll name a couple um, carboxylic acids and then draw the structures. So I'm going to name a couple here. So here are the two names I've sort of conjured up. And one of them is 2-ethylhexanoic acid, the other is 2,3-dibutyl-octanoic acid, if you can't read my writing very well. Go ahead and pause it and try to write the structure for these, and I will uh, do this in just a second. So, starting with the top one, the easiest way to do this is just draw your functional group. You know, that's carbon number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 6 carbons, and at carbon number 2 is an ethyl group. 2 2 ethyl hexanoic acid. Hopefully that makes sense. The, the next one is 2 3 dibutyl octanoic acid. So, again, I think the best way to do, do this when you're drawing them is start with the carboxyl group carbon 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And let's recount and make sure I got the right one. Okay, got it. And then on carbon number two, there's a butyl group. One, two, three, four. And on carbon number three, there's a butyl group. One, two, three, four. Now, something I think is important is to realize, again, this actually would be a longer chain here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine would actually be a longer chain, but we can't use that. It's important to understand that the actual chain that's used must include the carboxyl, I'm going to erase this and I'll fix it. It must include the carboxyl um, carbon. So our longest chain, even though we could make one of nine, our longest chain with the carboxyl is the eight here. 
So hopefully that makes sense. And that is naming carboxylic acids.